I make sure to ride my bike. I make sure to do this kind of amount of miles. I make sure to stay on this clock. I don't try to say, oh, I did an hour. No, I try to stay. If I'm going to go do two hours, I'm going to do two hours. I'm going to do four hours. I'm going to do four hours. Welcome to the La Ruta series on Spartan Up Podcast with host Roy Wallach. Hi, this is Roy Wallach, the host of the La Ruta Spartan Up Podcast. On today's episode, we talk again with mountain bike great Tinker Juarez. And this time we're gonna focus on how he has managed to stay so fit and so competitive at almost 60 years old. You wanna stick around for this one. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Headspace. You deserve to feel happier and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash Spartan for a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. I'm back here. This is Roy Wallach, author of Bike for Life, longtime LaRuta writer and rider, interviewing Tinker Juarez, probably the most well known mountain biker in the world and a multi time veteran of LaRuta. And Tinker now is going to talk about how he's managed to say this fit at this age. Tell him how old you are, Tinker, because it's unbelievable. Uh, 59. Yeah. I I'll, actually, my birthday's coming up March. So, uh, and I'll be out of the fifties and I'll be in the sixties next. So, uh, so bye bye number. Yeah. At the end of the fifties. <laughs> so amazing 60s. to think of it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of scary, you know, uh, you know, cause my son is uh, 13 and I just want to be around as long as I can for him. So, uh, I think bicycling is the right sport to keep me, uh, to keep me in shape and this could hopefully keep me around for a long time. And it helped you make a living. You're still sponsored. You're still a pro athlete. Yeah, I've been very lucky. I've been thankful. Uh, Cannondale has been, you know, they've been through some changes and in, uh, in the, in the, in, since I've been with uh, Cannondale since 94, uh, but I'm still around and, you know, the people have been really great to me and, uh, and they've been treating me really well. So, uh, so um, they still treat me as a, as I, as a pro as I was since uh, 94. So, um, so I know my job is just to keep on, keep on riding my bike. Yeah. You keep finding a way to get them publicity and that's what they pay for. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been very lucky that a lot of races I go to, um, you know, people invite me to go to races. So it really, you know, if I had, if, if Canada would have to pay for everything, I would be, uh, I would not make, you know, half the races, uh, that I get invited to. So I, I'm very lucky that, you know, promoters, I got to really get to know all the race promoters and all my races and, uh, and they do everything they possibly can. And then I just have to pitch in the rest of the, the rest of the cost. You know, I think the viewers might be fascinated to think that um, of you doing this at a world-class level at this age. So what's your secret? How do you do it? How do you keep uh, doing it? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I just love, you know, I just try to enjoy riding my bike every day and try to uh, just try to stay on top of my training and try to uh, try to keep the, the try to stay on a program that works for me. And I found that, you know, you know, putting in a certain amount of miles a week and, a, and do a certain amount of hard days during the week and do recovery rides during the during the week, it seems to have been working out good. So I've been trying to stay with that kind of program and, but not trying to cheat myself by going less miles or doing more extra miles or anything. I try to, I try to, I found something that has been working for me. Um, you know, so how many miles a week do you do? Uh, lately I've been averaging about 350 miles a week and that's by myself and pushing my own, you know, pushing on hard days and, and recovery days. Um, I try to do about 70 miles on a long day, which is about four, a little over four hours or around four hours. Yeah, these are on a road bike. Yeah, yeah. Most of it's all on a road bike because, you know, I live Los Angeles, Concrete City, and, uh, and I've always grown up knowing that my competition has always been roadies. And so, you know, I know that roadies are not going to be like, oh, I need to train on a dirt bike to be a good roadie. So I always felt that road racers are they got some secret and i you know i found that road training is the best secret for me 
is riding a road bike because you could recover quick. You stay, you know, more consistent in all your gears and you're not bouncing around and, you know, jerking all your body of, you know, your joints or any of that, the stuff. And it, everything is just smooth. And you, you know, you're, you're working more like a machine on a, on a road bike. And is that pretty typical for, for mountain bikers, for pro mountain bikers? They train a lot on the uh, road. I've tried to try to, you know, it's kind of strange, but I think a lot of some mountain bikers nowadays still ride more mountain bike than road. Really? And, and I'm kind of thinking maybe I should start doing that now uh, because I've kind of felt like, you know, I'm not really consistent on my road bike. Or, I mean, on my mountain bike, I'm either having a good race or a bad race. And uh, so I, I don't know. I've, it's, you know, maybe it's just more my age than, it, than anything, you know, if I'm going to have a good race or a good day or not. But, um, but uh, yeah, I think, you know, if I could train more on my road bike, I mean, my mountain bike, I would probably do more on my mountain bike, but I would have to try to equal the same amount of miles. And that would be really tough to match my miles, you know, on my mountain bikes, you know, compared to my road. So when you do a hard day, when you say hard day, what does hard day mean? Is that intervals? Is that... So oh, yeah. Yes. What is it? Um, mainly, I, I live about uh, 20 miles to the mountains. So I ride a, a, a pretty good pace, you know, like try to keep it over 20 miles an hour all the way to the mountains. And then when I hit the mountains, which is around 19 or 20 miles, I'll start. I do a loop in the mountain, which is about another hour and a half. And it's all climbing. So I do a lot of climbing, which and then when I'm climbing, I'm usually pushing, uh, you know, more, more uh, harder gears for strength. Yeah. And, uh, and I've always been known to be, you know, the big guy, the big gear guy. So I, I've always still stayed with that training. It, it seems to work for me. And, uh, I, I, you know, I get a lot of good power pushing, you know, uh, bigger gears and I do spinning gears and, uh, and then I'll ride through the mountains. And, and then by the time I get home, I get about 4,000, you know, sometimes more than 4,000 feet of climbing. And, and my hard days, I always got to do, it's always going to be climbing. There's not any flat, you know, and there's no flat training for me as far as hard days. My hard days are always going to be in the mountain, rather it's on my road bike or on my mountain bike. Now, a lot of people say that when you get over 50, even over 45, you got to do, you got to hit the weight room. Do uh, you hit the weights? Uh, when I was younger, I used to think that I needed the gym. I needed to try to do some cross training, uh, maybe go out and do some running a little bit in the off season. Uh, but no, I just, you know, I tried all those things and I enjoy more just riding my bike if I can every day. I mean, California, we could almost ride all year round. Uh, you know, I hardly ever put on uh, full leg warmers. I put on knee warmers and I don't like spending time on a trainer because, you know, we live here and, you know, there's, you have it, you know, you could walk outside and you could just put on some, you know, correct clothes on and, and ride, you know, and do your two or three hour rides. So, uh, yeah, I'd rather just be outside riding my bike. Um, I, I just get, you know, it's just weird for me to be indoors. So that's it. hundred percent bike, nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just, you know, I enjoy what about it. Most. Yoga? What about uh, massage? And how about that? Yeah. Um, no, no, I wish I could have, I wish I could get massages, but I am, I'm too cheap and I'm not going to go and spend <laughs> Forty dollars to get a massage, and if I had to do that, I'd be like wanting a massage, like you know, a, a few times a week. So uh, I think my recovery rides are more like a, it's a re relaxing. You know, you're you're kind of giving your body a massage by just going easy. Yes, yeah, um, so recovery know. rides are what? What? How, what do you consider a recovery ride? A recovery ride for me is usually uh, two to two and a half hours, and that's like about uh, around forty miles. Yeah at least 30 to 40 miles on, um, you know, on a, on a, on a, you know, like a day where I'm not racing on the weekend and I'm doing a recovery ride and I have no, nothing to, you know, interfere in my day. I'll go on and do maybe up to 50 miles, you know, and I could do that under three hours, you know, and that's uh, flat on the, in the flats on the riverbed down to the beach. Yeah. It's on the flats. I, I live, uh, well, you know, by a riverbed, which is uh, a reservoir, you know, the water that runs all the way to the mountains, to the ocean. Uh, we have, I live really close to the bike path. So I jump on that a bunch of times and then I jump off and I just take a lot of streets that I know. Um, you know, I, I, I leave out of my town in Whittier in a matter of like, uh, you know, in a few miles, uh, maybe five miles and I'm in all kinds of different cities. 
So I'm always going through from here to Azusa or Glendora, I'm going through about like five or six different towns uh, between there, from here to there. And I know them, t those streets better than I do on my streets around my house. So yeah. Yeah. And um, so really what you're doing now, you were doing 10 years ago and you were doing 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. But I'm more on a program now. I'm more strict about myself. Uh, maybe when I was younger, I didn't really follow like a strict program. Now I'm pretty much, I, I make sure to ride my bike. I make sure to do this kind of amount of miles. I make sure to stay on this clock. I don't try to say, oh, I did an hour. No, I try to stay. If I'm going to go do two hours, I'm going to do two hours. I'm going to do four hours. I'm going to do four hours. Three hours, I'm going to do this. And I always have to make sure that I, at the end of the week, I get over 300 miles. So, um, uh, you know, this year I was actually even breaking over 400 miles. Really? Uh, for a bunch of times, you know, because of the COVID and there was no racing, you know, it, you know, all my races that I wanted to do this year, you know, they always got canceled right at the end or, you know, before. And so I, I really was just scratching and digging and looking through my computer and just seeing if there was any race I could go to and, and, you know, try to reach the, uh, reach the promoters and see if they would invite me or do anything. I was, you know, really desperate, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, it's kind of weird that I do my own things and it's just, you know, it's, it's fine with me. You know, I, I learn how to, you know, promote my own self and I learn how to get to the races and I really meet great people and they, and they really do a lot for me, you know? So for me, I don't want to go there as, you know, Oh, you know, I don't know how I feel or I don't know if I'm fit. I want to go there and be as fit as I can for the race. So they could, you know, so they know that I'm pretty serious. Yeah. I, I went up to uh, big bear to see the Grizzly 100 and they also have the Grizzly 75. And I saw that you were registered for the 75, but I didn't see you there. Oh. You were there at the race, right? How'd you do? You mean this year? Yeah. You were there. I was, well, I was there. I was manning a, uh, a control okay. station and handing out drinks. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did show up and, uh, you know, I, my good friend, Derek, uh, He's a, he's a race promoter and he also uh, brings, you know, invites me. And uh, so I did the 75, I got second place this year. Uh, I won it the year before, but this year I didn't have any sleep. And then I was racing again. It's a guy that's half my age. So there was no way I had a chance to uh, battle with him because, you know, he's fresh and I'm, I'm tired and but right off the give, back. Just to give people an idea of what the Grizzly 175 is, at even the 75, which is about 47 miles or 48 miles, I think, of mountain biking. Yeah, yeah, it's at least it's that. It's still got 8,000 feet of climbing, including one spot that's 4,000 straight. Right. So it's a crazy, it's a brutal, it's crazy a brutal hard rate. event. Yeah, I've done a, it a couple times, but when I, when I do it, I come in seven hours, and you're usually done in three, yeah. <laughs> three or three and a half or something. Yeah, no, it's it's a really hard race. I mean, we we definitely uh, drop down a long ways down the valley uh, from the top of Snow Summit, and then we have to turn around. And there's this climb called Rafford, and that one right there kind of decides the winner at the, by the time right. we get to the top of that race, that top of that climb. And then you still got about another 15 miles to go. Because if you bonk on Radford, you're you're toast. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, and then you have the altitude to deal with. And if you're not uh, if you're not from altitude like me. I'm here at sea level. I go there and I'm, I'm breathing like a choo-choo train, man, all the way around the whole race. I'm like either loosening my helmet, going up the hill or, you know, tightening my helmet so it doesn't fall off going down the hill just to try to breathe and, uh, and stuff like that. But um, on a day like that, doing the Grizzly 100 or even doing any of the days at La Ruta, especially day one, the super long day, what's the diet strategy on that one? on these type of races? Uh, you know, everybody has, you know, the ways of eating and stuff. I, I, I'm not really picky anymore. I try to just enjoy whatever I could eat at the moment, at the time. Um, I, I've raced in the morning and I could barely, I could, I, I might have a cup of coffee, a glass of orange juice and some toast and that'll be it. And I really? feel ready I mean, to go. You don't yeah. worry about, you don't do a lot of salt and electrolytes to- No, I don't do much really? of any of that, yeah. Yeah, I think it's whatever you build up during the whole build up all the way up to the day of the race, you should be, you know, your body should be almost ready, you know, no matter what you do that night, you know, that night and the race day. 
So uh, I always feel like my body is just, you know, ready and it's got everything it needs in it. And uh, just hopefully I'm going to have a good day. So your body is just so used to pushing it day after day that you don't even do anything special the day before a race. The no, night before. not really. There's no. no big carbo party or anything like that. No, I mean, if, if, I mean, I'll occasionally have pasta and stuff like that the night before, but it's not because it's not because I'm thinking of, you know, carboing up for the race. It's just because that's, you know, sounds good for that night. Um, yeah. So but, it's but during the race itself. You're not, you're, what are you eating a power bar or. Uh, I usually eat? just, you know, you know, it's funny that every morning, like at La Ruta, I'll fill up my water bottle with their juice right there at the machine. And make sure I use that, you know, I use whatever juice they have there and I'll fill it up. And so you I'll might have get a, mango like, juice or papaya yeah, it could be or mango whatever juice they have. Or it could be, yeah, pineapple juice, orange juice or whatever. And I'll start off with a full bottle with that. And then uh, during the race, I'll just get hand out bottles during the race. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it could be just water. It could be, uh, it could be, you know, electrolyte or. And Larue, there's or, a lot of fruit there. When you, you show up to the aid stations, there's fruit. Do you, do you throw that fruit in? Uh, as long as I have time, I'll definitely, uh, you know, if the riders are with me, I'm battling out. They all want to stop for a second. We, we kind of communicate when it comes down oh. to, you know, when it comes down to where we're coming into a, uh, a fee zone and we say, Hey, let's stop for a second. And then nobody's going to say no. And we all stop, we grab our food and we just boogie out of there. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So it's been more better that way. I've in my early career, there was times when you might sneak in to get some food and then the other guys won't, and they'll just take off, and then you got to chase after them yeah. for about you know a few miles, you know. So they're, but now there's more like a strategy where all the riders kind of like we all say, hey, are we going to stop or not or whatever, and you know some riders say I don't need to, but I'll wait, and so yeah. So it's been. When is the last time you did Laruta? When the last year? Uh, last year, yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. How'd you yeah, do? Yeah, I was there last year, and uh, I did race in my category. Uh, I won my age, my master's class, and I finished in the top ten in the overall category. Wow, pretty good. Yeah, yeah so I was really mm -hmm. happy. And uh, are you are you going to go back anytime soon? I hope so. Yeah, I really, you know, I, I, you know, people like I say, they're like family when I go there, and they treat you, and they everybody wants to talk with you and hang out with you, and so it's never a boring moment. And it's always exciting and, you know, and, you know, you're going over the race strategies for the next day and you're looking at the map, you're looking at the weather, you're looking at, you know, who you have to beat. There's all kinds of things that are running through your head, but at the same time, everybody's having a good time. So, uh, well, this next year will be pretty special because you'll be 60 years old doing La Ruta. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's okay. I Amazing. mean, I feel like I've. It. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, you know, I'm still riding no different than I was yesterday, the day before. There ain't no changes yet. You know, I'm, I'm not getting any prettier. So that's the only thing. So, uh, but the inside of my body feels great. And, uh, and that's what counts, you know, I'm taking care of what I need to and, uh, and I'm still enjoying my training and my, you know, my riding is still fun. And, you know, Canada still takes care of me. So, I'm going to try to, uh, you know, hang in there for a couple more years, you know, until I'm 62. Uh, so if I can make 62, I can at least be collecting some unemployment money, you know. <laughs> and at least I, if I could do that, I made it to that point, then I, I think I successfully, uh, you know, did something right in my sport. Well, I've heard it said that the best social security is just to keep on riding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't All see, right. I mean, I want to keep on riding because I think it's just going to be a good – it would just be good for this, you know, for people to look at, look up at me. And when they get old, they're going to want to maybe continue racing too or riding too. And I'm uh, sure you're getting a lot of that from people now, you know, as they, they realize how old you are, they're, they're almost thanking you for the inspiration. It would seem. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And I really feel really honored when I hear people say that. And then a lot of people, they say that, yeah, I just started biking and I'm, you know, 40 years old and, you know, it's because of you is why I am, you know, I know I could do it. And, you know, so it's really, it's a lot of good things that I I'm, you know, passing on to people, you know? Yeah. And must feel great. Important. Hey, yeah. listen, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. you know, Roy. Enjoy, I always enjoy seeing you and talking to you, man. I always mm -hmm. enjoy talking to you, buddy. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at La Ruta maybe uh, next year. I'd love to be there. All right. All right, man. Take it easy. All right. Take care, Adios. buddy. 
This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Headspace. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash spartan for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation.